Good morning, everybody, and thanks again for tuning into my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to talk to you about something that came up from my previous video that I posted just a couple of days ago, actually, about using different JPEG profiles in the camera. And the question that came up was, how did I get to get the same image in multiple different profiles? And the answer, quite simply, is that I used the Fujifilm XRAW Studio software, which is uh, really handy for this kind of thing. So a very quick video, I'm just going to show you how I did it and I'm going to show you how to set up profiles etc. It's a free piece of software, it allows you to convert your RAW files into JPEGs or TIFFs if you're using the GFX using all of the in-camera settings and things like shadows, highlights, film simulations etc. Okay, so let's get going. Now the first thing you'll need to do is install the software of course. The version of XRAW Studio is currently available in both Mac and Windows versions. I'm going to use the Windows versions but the Mac version is identical. Now before we get going I just want to say to you if you do like the video please like it, please subscribe, please share, all of that good stuff. The YouTube algorithm has changed very recently so if you don't hit the bell icon you won't get updates for any new videos in the future. So please do that, it really helps me out. So head on over to Google and search for XRAW Studio Download and that will take you to the Fujifilm website where you can download the Mac or Windows versions as I mentioned. I'm going to go to the Windows version and I'm just going to hit the Begin Download and it will start downloading the file that I will use to install the software. Now, once the software is downloaded and installed, you're going to have to make a little change in your camera. I don't think the default is as we see it right now. So you'll need to go into your connection settings, PC connection mode, and you'll want to set it to USB raw conversion backup restore. Now, the reason for this is because you have to plug the the camera that you're going to use for the conversion and it does have to be the same camera that you want to convert the RAWs from. So in this case I'm going to use an X-T2. I'm plugging the X-T2 via the USB cable that come with the camera just directly into my PC, straight into your Mac or PC will be fine and then the software will automatically see that that camera is installed. But you absolutely need to do this setting first. Now when you switch the camera on, on the back of the LCD you'll just see a black screen. You won't see anything, the little red and green light will flash on the back of your camera and that indicates that the computer is talking to the camera via USB. So make sure this setting is installed on the camera, USB raw conversion backup restore. You will probably need to update your firmware on your cameras if you haven't done it recently. Um, I'm using the very latest one version 4.10 for the X-T2 but all of the cameras that are supported by the actual software will need the latest firmware installed. Once you launch the software, if you haven't got the USB connected or you haven't got that setting set correctly in the camera, then you'll see it says waiting for a camera to connect. Now, as soon as the camera is connected, that will change and it will show you the histogram and it will show you battery levels, etc. But you do need to switch the camera on, plug it in via USB. Now, one thing to remember about this point is you do not need a memory card in the camera. This isn't about converting images that are currently on a memory card. This is about converting raw images that are currently on your computer. The reason why you have to plug the camera into the computer is because it's the camera that's going to do the processing. So, in effect, your computer is going to send the raw file back to the camera up the USB cable, the camera is going to do the conversion and then it's going to download that back to your computer. So you do not need to have a memory card in, you don't need the raw files on the memory card, you actually need the raw files on your computer. Once the camera has been connected and the computer recognizes it, the software will automatically update and in the top left hand corner you can see there now that it says Fujifilm X-T2, it gives me the firmware version and it gives me the battery level. I'll also see the histogram of the image that I've actually selected in the screen. And then when it comes to editing and changing the images, it's really very straightforward. As you can see in the top right hand side, I've got profiles. The as shot condition is as the images come out of the camera. So I shot this, even though it's a raw file, remember, I shot this with the Acros film simulation so I could see the black and whites in the camera. So if I change it to Velvia, it's going to update. Now remember, it's going back to the camera to do this processing. I can change the color, I can change dynamic range, I can change whatever I want. Now you can see also that I have my user profiles. You will need to check out that video that I did last week or a couple of days ago I should say about my JPEG settings to understand these but you'll see that I can just select any one of those. I've got the Padilla one which is you know my favorite black and white one, the grainy one you can see there that it has the strong grain etc and it's very very easy to just to change these settings and it's going to give you 
exactly the same as you get from the camera. You won't be able to get exactly the same from Lightroom, you won't be able to get exactly the same from Alien Skin Exposure when you're converting your RAW files. It's just not possible because of the sensor, the camera processing, I should say, in the cameras themselves are doing all of this work for us. Now, that doesn't mean you have to use this, of course, but if you really want to get the perfect JPEGs that the camera can produce and you have been shooting RAW, then this is the way to do it. Now you can see that I can also choose save profile. I'm just gonna create one called new profile and it's got that Provia, it's got the um, minus two highlights, shadows, and I can switch between any of my save profiles. I can switch between as shot, and if I go down to new profile, which is the one I just created, then it's gonna show me that version of it too. So remember this isn't a editing system. This isn't a piece of software for editing the images. This is a piece of software for getting those JPEGs from the camera if you've already shot those raw files. You have zoom options, you can zoom in, you can fit, you can check everything out of course. So if you wanna adjust that profile, maybe you wanna change the, the grain or something like that. You also have a before and after view. So uh, this is really quite handy actually if you're just trying to compare versions. So I can zoom in also on the before and after view. Um, maybe I want to convert it or sorry, compare it to the PAR version of my film simulations, compare it to the, um, the Padilla version, or I can compare with the, um, I don't know, any of the others really. And let's go for street and see what that looks like. And I can make an informed decision on how I want this conversion to go. It really is a useful piece of software. I mean, it's not the most beautiful software in the world, um, but it, you know, it's very useful for this kind of stuff. So you can also do the, you know, all of that stuff we've got in the profiles, we've got in the menu system over here, you can copy and paste. Uh, you can zoom in, fit to screen, before, after, all of that stuff is in the, the menus also. Um, now, when it comes to actually doing the conversions themselves, what happens is the process happens on the camera. So remember, the key thing to all of this is the camera needs to be in, uh, connected. So when I hit convert, it goes off to the camera and there it's created the JPEG. So the camera has created that JPEG. Now, if you're using GFX, you can also create TIFF files. Mm, yeah, it'd be great if we could create TIFF files on all of the other versions also. And this is the version 1.2 of the Camera Raw software. That's it, there's not a lot more to it. It's really, really very straightforward. It's very useful if you've got raw files installed on your computer that you want to get the camera to create JPEGs from, or let's just say you've got a set of custom simulations, custom film simulations that you want to convert and compare. Plug the camera in, run the extra raw software, get the camera to do all of the work. You will not, and I mean this, you will not get exactly the same JPEGs out of Lightroom. You won't get exactly the same JPEGs out of any other raw processing software. You will need to use extra raw software if you want to get exactly the same images that the camera will convert. So the key things to remember, you need to have your latest updates on your firmware probably. Um, check the website, check the Fujifilm website for the cameras that are supported and more and more cameras are becoming supported as they go forward. You absolutely need to make sure the camera is set up for the conversion mode in the USB and connection settings. You also need to make sure that the camera is connected to the computer, of course. You need to make sure that you are using the exact same camera that you want to convert the RAW files from. So for example, you can't connect an X-Pro2 to, to the computer and expect it to convert X-T2 images. Okay, so it needs to be the same camera that's connected to the computer. You can then check and change your profiles, change your settings, all of that good stuff, and then hit the convert button and it will create the JPEGs for you. Pretty straightforward, very useful piece of software. And yeah, that's it. So I hope you liked it. I hope it was a very quick tutorial today. Please subscribe, please like, please share, all of that good stuff. And I'll see you next week.